to be saying Richard. Dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna install this now, and we're gonna go to Home Depot to extend these wires so that they'll actually reach where my ethanol sensor is. So we just got back from Home Depot. I got wire strippers and crimpers. Got some extra wire to extend the, the lines for the gauge and some some connectors. And then we're going to use those to extend these wires. We only need three out of the six that are provided because we're not running fuel temperature. But we're going to extend these wires to connect to the, the ethanol sensor. So I started, uh, I've got these two wires extended, the ground and the um, sensor wire. And now I'm extending the 12 volt. And I don't know how much extra wire we need, so this is only $5, so I used a, a lot, a lot, a lot. Extra. Full length. I'm extra. I attached a coat hanger so we can push the wires through the firewall and get them to run to where they need to go. So I sent the wires through the firewall. There's a little grommet up there. Um, yeah, let's see if you can see, see it. Um, where am I at here? Yeah, so right there, that's where they're going through the firewall. And then, it came out right here. And then the ground will run to this ground strap. The positive will run to this pink wire and the green wire, the sensor, will run to this white one. We're gonna test the gauge out real fast just to make sure it comes on and stuff before we start hooking stuff up. Are you uh, tapping it or something? Are you removing it? Yeah. It's like flashing. flashing? Leave it. Connected, it's good. That works? Yeah. Right. So the sensor works. Uh, we're just gonna run the the um, T connections and it'll be done. I gotta figure out where I wanna mount it. But I, I don't really wanna mount it because it's not something I need to see constantly. So I was actually just gonna tuck it up under the dash and just pop it down whenever I needed to look at it, like up under here. Like tuck it, obviously the wire won't hang down because it'll run to the firewall, but whenever I need to see it, just pop it down, check it out, put it back because I don't really like like uh, gauges all over the place. That's why my boost gauge is built into my vent, but uh, we'll see wherever the final part takes us. Yeah, I need to either spread it or cut it some more. We're going to run the ground right here, but uh, I need to cut it just a little bit wider to get it around this stud. We ran these little T, these self-tapping T clamps. They just slide over the wire right here. And then you close it and then this goes once it's shut and this slides in like this and makes the connection with your new wire so that we don't have to splice anything and then uh, right now the battery's dead because I have a fuckboy race battery and somehow that shit ran out of juice so um I'll test it out now I go show them what it, where it's gonna maybe sit Richard yeah go show them where it's gonna maybe sit Richard you know I just told them that I had no idea where I wanted <laughs> maybe I said maybe right there right under the P3 
Let them New York dudes be saying Richard. Dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> scared me. Don't disrespect my order. Dead ass. Race car life? Fuck boy life. Dude, that shit is sick. So the car is currently on E38. Oh, that's so tight, man. I feel so fucking accomplished for some reason. Now you gotta order that thing so you can put it's it It's the little things that count. Huh? The little... Yeah, thing with okay, the hold up. Hold this right here. You about to be like, what? So if we want... Something win our way for once. Kinda. It only fucking took extra fucking effort. Maximum effort. And when I don't want it right there, like when I want to use my AC or something, which we won't need for a while because it's about to be fall, I can just take it off and tuck it up. But for now, that's where it'll stay. If I can see my boost, my E. Gang, gang, gang. I'm gonna throw some five gallons of E85 in my car to see what it takes the takes the ethanol content up from E38 to it'd probably be like E67 or something. We're good at math around here, I, I promise. already like 10 degrees colder since I complained. You heard Richard was like, damn dude, you called it like when we were working on the springs and I was like, I'm done working on cars till it gets colder. And then like the very next day it got colder. Let's oh see what let's see what the E's on now. Yeah. My guess was like E67. But I don't I don't know if we're good at math here. That was my fault. I tapped the button instead of hold it. Let's see where it goes to. Yeah, I'll just wait until it figures it out. It's probably all the old fuel still in the lines. So I think it's still reading all the old fuel that is in the all the lines. So it's like the last point before it gets to the engine so it probably take like a mile or so before it starts getting the fresh stuff so my ethanol calculation was pretty close I guessed that it would be E67 and it ended up actually being E68 so I'll have to I'll have to add some 93 because <clears throat> the Wabro 450 maxes out around like E40. So um, I'll have to add some 93 to bring that down so that the car won't lose power. Because once it makes like on E68, it's going to make more power than the, the 450 can flow. So it'll cut power and the car will be probably down on like 28 pounds or something like that and on E40 it's it runs on like 34 pounds of boost so um, I'll get some 93 in it tomorrow and get that ethanol content brought down <laughs>